cataractcoach.com, fixing a dislocated IOL. Well, I'll do a step-by-step -step technique and show you the pre-op eval. Now the right eye looks great, well-centered lens, 2020 vision. The left eye, we see a decentered three-piece multifocal lens in the sulcus, and there's 2050 vision with ghosting and residual astigmatism. Again, the right eye looks great, beautifully centered, multifocal IOL. And that's a toric lens too. That right eye, if we look here at the haptic optic junction, we can see the toric marks. Now the left eye, the problem is the three-piece lens is a multifocal lens, but it's decentered, and you see some iris translumination defect. The center of this lens is not close to the center of the visual axis. We see an open posterior capsule with some vitreous prolapse leading to the lens shift. We can see there is good anterior capsule rim, especially if we put the slit beam to the side. So here's the patient on the OR table. We can see the dislocated lens. There's some residual, a uh, little bit of cortex there in the periphery or fibrotic tissue. And we can see the lens capsule has that uh, hole in it in that nasal quadrant. So using an infusion in one hand and the chopper in the other, just looking around a little bit to see what's going on. And let's see how much vitreous is prolapsed. So we'll put some triamcinolone inside the anterior chamber because as you know, those particles will stain the vitreous. And now when we put the infusion in, we'll be able to see the exact area of that prolapsed vitreous. So here you have the infusion on the left hand, the cutter on the right, and there's a significant degree of vitreous prolapse, and that's contributing to the shift of the IOL and decentration. So there we can use the vitrectomy cutter on a very high cut rate of 4,000 cuts per minute to help remove some of that prolapse vitreous, but it's kind of tough with the lens there. So let's just take a break here. Let's get the IOL up in the anterior chamber, just temporarily. Let's bring out one haptic, and now let's bring the other haptic out and get the entire IOL in the anterior chamber. Then we'll put our vitrectomy instrument and we'll put our infusion underneath the optic to do a really complete and thorough uh, anterior vitrectomy of the prolapse vitreous. Now notice we only use two tiny incisions, two paracentesis incisions. We don't need to open up the main phaco incision. So now we can go back inside the eye, clean up any of this prolapse vitreous. You can see it there going right to the incision. But we'll take our time with this. Don't rush this. Remember, you'll need to restain with triamcinolone to ensure complete removal of prolapse vitreous. We don't want to take out any of the capsular support at this point. So while it's tempting to try to clear some of that visual access with the vitrectomy cutter, let's leave as much support as possible. We can always yag it later. So once we've cleaned up all the prolapse vitreous, now we can get the IOL back into position. So using the infusion there in one hand, in the left hand, we can now dial in the haptics, and fortunately, we have a very good anterior capsular rim here. So there is anterior capsular rim for 360 degrees, complete support, and there's the other haptic going in the bag. And we'll get that optic nicely centered now. Now, what are the options for holding this lens? You can just leave it in the sulcus. You can also try to capture the optic behind the existing capsular axis or other, even posterior capsular uh, opening if you'd like. But in this case, we're gonna leave the lens in the sulcus and we'll just get it partially tucked underneath the rex's edge if we can. Now, there's a little bit of lens material there or fibrotic material there outside the visual axis. We're gonna be gentle here. We wanna preserve as much of the support as we can. We can always do a YAG capsulotomy later. So that looks pretty darn good. So we're gonna seal up all the incisions. We've checked the anterior segment. There's no more prolapse vitreous. And all our goal is in this procedure is remove the prolapse vitreous and get the lens securely positioned and well-centered in the visual axis. We can go back later in a couple of months and do LASIK or PRK for the residual refractive error, which in this case is just a myopic cylinder. So we can see here at the end of the case, the diffractive rings are now precisely centered. So take home lesson, figure out why the lens is decentered. And in this case, it was due to prolapse vitreous. Thanks for watching.
And check out cataractcoach.com, the free teaching website. Do you know we send out a free email every single day with a brand new video? A lot of great learning material. Hey, it's fun to watch YouTube videos too, but I bet you'll learn a whole lot more if you subscribe to our newsletter.